Howdy guys. Alright, so welcome to the uh, third video in the Firewatch Project series that I'm working on. So in this video we're going to work on the house. Uh, we're going to get all this guy uh, set up. So let me actually go into the wireframe. So we're going to go and get all this geometry set up over here for stuff like the roof. We're going to do the windows and the um, just the platform and uh, all the braces and stuff down here on the bottom. Uh, kind of hold the structure up. All right, so we're just going to get that all taken care of. Um, let me roll through some of these values here. So, like, we can change the, the house height here to whatever we want. Uh, we have the overhang for the roof. So I put it at 1. It just goes all the way in. I had it at uh, 135, I believe, or 125. 135 looked good. And then we have the, uh, the roof pitch. So if I put this up like 3, we can have, like, a really pitched roof. And all the... Uh, Shingles get created for you. All right, I haven't finished uh, creating all the uh, parameters for this yet, so I just wanted to get through building all the geometry for it, and then we'll go and clean it all up, get all the uh, parameters created. I'll show you guys all the new stuff with uh, Houdini Engine 2 UI. All right, so with that, let's uh, get started. Well, let's get started by building the uh, top structure up here that the house uh, sits on. So we need to build like a platform. And usually under the platform, there's like some major, you know, pieces of wood that, you know, hold the whole thing up. Um, so let's go and get those guys set up first. I'm going to allow editing of contents here so I can jump inside. And the first thing I need to do is I need to expose the very top primitive here. Um, to the rest of the, the entire network here. So that way we can you know start from this geometry up here. So to do that um, I'm just gonna drop down a blast node like so and we are going to blast The last primitive in that whole list. All right, so we can just do uh, the end prims here so end prims from the incoming geometry minus one and we just need to put this onto primitives like so, delete non-select, and then we also need to put the two back ticks because this group is actually expecting a string in there. And so there you go. So now we have just that top print. What I like to do, you might see this quite often, is drop down a null node like so, and I just call this out top prim, or something that is useful for you. Now you, your null nodes not, might not look like mine, um, and the way to get that to look like this. You can hit X on the keyboard, or not X, sorry, uh, Z on the keyboard, and you can hold down Control, click and drag, and just drag and drop it onto your null node, and that will set it as a preset, basically. Now, same for colors, too, so if you hit C on the keyboard, hold down Control and just drag and drop onto that. Basically, what it's done is it's overridden the, um, your user preferences in your My Documents folder. So... With that all set up, let's move on over to the house over here. And I'm going to drop down an object merge node. And we're going to call this get top prim, like so. Uh, we don't need any transform information. And what I need to do is go and get that top prim that we just blasted away. So I'm going to do dot dot forward slash dot dot forward slash to jump out of this node and into the Firewatch Tower node. So we need to dive into that Firewatch Tower node there. Or sorry, I'm um, the tower node. There we go. And then I want to select that out top prim. So now we have this geometry available to us inside of the house node. Cool. So at this point, uh, I want to go and drop down a convert line. Um, and so we're going to be building a lot of parts and pieces for this. So I'm going to set up a few different streams inside of here. And to do that, I'm going to drop down a null node here. And we'll just use this to be able to reference the geometry. We'll call this top prim. There we go. And I'll drop down a number, another object merge node here, and we'll call this guy get top prim. Now you don't have to do this. Uh, this is just what I like to do to keep things nice and organized in my networks. Cool. So now I have that guy available to me. So I'm going to drop down a, a convert line node, very handy node here for performing these types of modeling. And I actually don't need the rest length, so I'm just going to turn it off. Um, I just don't want to add extra attributes that I have to delete later on. I like to keep these things relatively neat and clean. So I don't, I don't have a bunch of extra data hanging around. And then with that done, what I'm going to do is drop down a carve node. Because remember now these are all separate individual primitives here. And so I want to offset them a little bit. 
And so I'm going to do my equal offsets here. So I just drag and drop this down here. Relative cha channel reference. So actually, actually, no, that'll, that'll work. Yeah, we'll do one minus. There we go. So then I have the offsets. And what this is going to become are where the actual, those large pieces of wood, you know, that traverse um, the top part of this platform that hold it all up are going to be. Okay. So now I need to drop down an add node like so. And I'm going to delete the geometry, keep the points. We're going to do by group. And I'm going to skip every nth point here. And we are going to get the number of primitives from this convert line up here. Or you could do it from the carve as well. So let's just do n prims. And let's just take the incoming geometry. Should be fine. Yeah, there we go. Perfect. So now you can see as I offset this, we get a nice equal offset around the entire object here. Pretty cool. Awesome. So with that done, let's go and add some normals because I want to peek these guys out a little bit. And to do that, I'm going to use a little bit of VEX. All right. So I'm going to try to introduce more uh, VEX techniques that I usually use quite often. So we're going to call these our peak normals. There we go. And I'm going to leave it on the run over points here. And we're going to do int uh, nay for the variable name. So I'm going to go and get all the neighbors here. All right, so we're going to do zero and at PT num. And the reason why I want to do that, so for each one of these points, right, I'm going to go and find its neighbor. And because each one of these neighbors, only, or each one of these points only has one neighbor, right, for each one of these curves here, um, it'll be perfect for our peak normals because I want normals that point away from the points. All right, so this will be much clearer when I go and get the normal set up for you guys. So we're going to do vector other pause is equal to uh, point and we're going to get the other position. So we're going to get the geometry from the incoming geometry. We're going to get the position and I'm going to do nay zero. So that's the other point because and this works because we only have or we know we only have one other neighbor in this whole thing. So now I can say that at n is equal to at p minus other pause. And if I turn on my normals now, you can see they're facing away from each other. So one thing we should do is actually normalize this as well. So let's normalize. Always a good idea to normalize your vectors. There we go. Perfect. And now I want to peak these. Now, like I said uh, in the previous video, you can go and use the peak node at this point. All right. Uh, we just don't want to recompute those normals. All right. So that's one way to do it. Um, or you could just do it inside of your attribute wrangle as well. So you can just say um, at P plus equals at N times some amount. Right. So we'll create a new channel float. So we'll just do CHF and we'll call this uh, peak amount. There we go. And we'll expose that parameter spare parameter. And now we have basically the same exact or the exact same exact operation. And uh, again, like I said, you can use the peak node. I'm just more comfortable with the VEX. And I like to kind of just put all my operations there as much as I can. Cool. So at this point, now we have our curves that we can use for the wood plank. So let's drop down a wood plank node. And there we go. So now all you need to do is just go and adjust the size. So I'm going to keep these guys at square. Usually they're like, you know, these really thick pieces of wood. Yeah, something like that looks pretty cool. And I think, you know, in the next uh, chapter here for this particular video, I'm going to show you guys how to add the, the caps onto this uh, because I've noticed that I need the caps on those things. But before we get into that, let's go now and I want to create usually when you look at these particular structures, they have some sort of clamping mechanism right in the center here just to you know, help bolt down the, these large uh, pieces of wood. So I want to create that particular uh, structure as well. And so to do that, I'm just going to move this off to the side here. And I'm going to drop down an intersection uh, analysis node. This will give me a point where all of these curves basically intersect each other, which is really cool. All right. And one thing that I want to do now is I want to create a line over here. So I want to create basically a It'll end up looking like a plus sign. All right. And so I'm going to then use a copy and transform node for this guy. Let's take a look at this here. Uh, I want these guys pointing on Z. Like so. And then in this copy and transform node, 
I just want to spin it around 90 degrees on Y four times. All right, so now we have this plus symbol. Let's um, go and fuse all this stuff together because currently they are, or we have multiple points in the center here. All right, so let's fuse it all together. There we go. And then let's do a copy to points. And for each one of those intersection points, we're going to copy this little plus curve structure that we built. Let's take a look at that now. And I need to actually switch these inputs. Sorry about that. There we go. So now we got these plus symbols there. And we can control their size right like that on the line node itself. So a really easy way to get that structure going. And then to create the geometry for this, let's use a poly expand 2D node. So let's do a poly expand 2D. This will basically generate some geometry we can then extrude for ourselves, which is great. So if we just use the offset here, we can make this thinner or thicker, whatever you like. And then let's do a poly extrude. So we'll do poly extrude just to give it some thickness. Now we can always go and get, just to make this more procedural, we can always go and get this guy, one of the parameters up here that actually controls the height. So this one right here. So let's copy this parameter. And let's just paste that in here. There we go. Yeah, it's looking pretty good. And let's just add a little bit more on. So we'll say plus 0 0.1 or maybe 2.5, too much. Yeah, I think that'll work for now. Very cool. And inside of the poly extrude node, we also need to make sure that we uh, include the back geometry. Because if we don't, then it'll be an open piece of geometry there. All right. So now all we need to do is uh, make sure that these two guys are merged together. There we go. And then we got to take a look at this offset that we're getting here. So let's go and drop down a transform node up here. Or we can use a match size too. Well, no, we can't because it's actually all the way up there. So let's actually drop this down just a little bit. Something like that. I always use a centroid of this guy. I think I'm just going to leave it like that for now. I'm um, also going to kind of reduce the size here. Let's do 0 0.05 and raise this up. Or we could just actually take the total height of this guy, this guy right here. No, we should do it this way. Sorry, I'm just kind of doing this on the fly here. Yeah, we'll do this guy right here. And then what we can do, rather than just hard code that value, let's get the BB box. So we say the incoming geometry. And the value we want is the DY size. And then we'll just multiply that by 0 0.5. And we just need to negate that. And take a look at the results. Yeah, now we're procedural. Cool, and now we have control over the length of those clamps there. And they usually are kind of something like that. So we can work more on those together. But that is the general idea of creating those types of structures uh, using intersection analysis and uh, just hard, or making our own custom peak normals and stuff like that. So some cool techniques in there. All right, let's move on to updating our wood planks HDA. All right, let's take a look at um, adding the caps to our wood plank HDA. Uh, that'll really come in handy. So I'm just going to right click on this guy and say allow editing of contents like so. And really what we need to do is just down here at the very end, um, we need to go and add in our caps, right? So the sweep node actually has uh, functionality for that. So if you come over here to the surface tab and into the end cap section here, uh, and just turn it on to single polygon. You can see that it'll add um, some geometry there for you. Uh, we can also group it, which is really important because we actually want to UV that. And I also want to add a little bit of an extrusion and inset to it. So it has, you know, just a little bit of shape to it. So let's uh, take care of that. So now that we've got the end cap created and we have a, a group for it, uh, let's do a split node. And this split node allows me then to split on that group name. And so I'm just going to put an end cap. So I'm going to invert that selection. So that way all the uh, end caps come out of this side right here. And let's first uh, do a poly extrude node like so and we are going to go and just kind of pop it out just a little bit we need to promote these parameters so uh, whoever's using this particular hda has control over these values because each wood plank is going to be a, a little bit different cool so with that all set up 
let's go and um, add in our UVs there. So for this, um, I'm actually going to drop down a group node for uh, this particular operation, use the UV flatten node. Uh, I find that to be one of the more useful UV nodes in here if you're relying on nodes alone. And so uh, to do this, um, I'm going to go and switch my group type on the group node here to edges. And we're going to go to include by edges. And I'm just going to uh, turn on this min edge angle. And I'm going to increase it until we get rid of that top guy. There we go. So I want to basically have these particular edges as my seams. right? And we'll expose this value too so users can change that. And so. Um, the common thing to do is just call this the scene group or seams like so and then um, drop down a UV flatten node and put that seams group into this particular flattening constraint so you can just type it in um, or you can go and select it from this little drop down over here there we go all right so now uh, I'm gonna save my scene and I'm gonna hit 5 on the keyboard and that's gonna take me into my UV view so you can see now we have perfect uh, UVs for these guys. Now, one thing one thing I should mention here is that the spectral is going to be faster than the uh, angle base. So if you look at the documentation, uh, let's go and uh, hit the little question mark here really quick, just so I can show you guys. Always good to reference this stuff, uh, especially when building HDs for the Houdini engine. You want to make sure it's as speedy as possible. Now, you know, obviously the larger your uh, HDA systems get, they will slow down. So uh, I think, but I believe it was all the way down at the bottom here. Let's do. There we go. I found it. So flattening method. So you can see here in the documentation, it says spectral is the faster of the two. So I'm just going to leave it on spectral for now. It looks fine to me. Uh, you can always verify that you're not getting stretching by dropping on a, down a UV visualize node. So if you do UV uh, visualize, and I'm going to use the labs version here because I have the labs installed and I'm just going to reduce the size here to one and one. Yeah, that looks pretty good. Very nice. So the last thing we should do is drop down a UV layout node and just stack all these guys together. We'll uh, do some BEX and uh, randomize their positions here, but I, I want to start from a clean slate here. So in the UV layout node, I'm going to select stack identical islands like so and just leave it at that. Very cool. So now all I need to do is merge these two guys together. So let's merge these guys like so and just uh, wire that in. And we also need to um, provide a switch. So I'm going to switch on whether or not we want caps or not because we should make that an option for users. So let's do a switch here. So I'm going to wire in this version, which is just our straight up version with no caps or anything like that. And Actually, we could do the switch underneath here. So let's do this here. So I'm just going to grab this wire like so and just wire it in like that. And then the switch now is here. So if we do want caps, we want this version. There we go. All right, so now we can switch between the two operations. Cool, so let's go and update our type properties for this guy. So let's go and right click on the wood plank up here and we'll go to our type properties. And I just want to expose a couple of those parameters there. So let's move that off to the side and let's go and add a new folder. And I'm going to call this, or I'm going to set it to simple. I'm going to call it uh, caps. And the first thing I want to do is just uh, drag and drop this select input here and turn it over to a toggle. So that'll allow us to determine whether or not we want caps or not. So we'll call this cap switch. And we'll say use caps with a question mark. And I'm going to leave it on by default. I think for most of these cases, especially for this particular model, uh, we are going to want the uh, end caps on. And then we need to go and expose some of these values. So let's go now and uh, expose the distance. So let's drag this down. We're going to drag out the inset because we want to control over that. And then we also want to control the min edge angle here. Like so. I think these guys, the rest of these guys are fine. Yeah. Now one thing I want to do is I want to turn off these guys right here if, or hide them or disable them if uh, we have the use caps toggle turned off. So the way that this works is 
Um, if you come down here to the interface options, you can disable them or you can hide them. So let's let's do a hide actually. So I'm going to say when caps switch uh, is equal to uh, zero, we're going to basically uh, hide it. Or actually, let's do a disable. Sorry about that. All right, and I'm just going to copy this guy. We'll do the same for all these guys here. Hit apply and accept. All right, let's jump up and out. I'm going to hit U on the keyboard. And let's go down to our use caps. So now when I turn it off, they get grayed out. All right, so just a really uh, useful way to do it. Now, if you're doing the Houdini engine, um, I do actually just end up hiding them. I don't believe the disabling actually works. I don't know. We'll, we'll see how it works at the end of this video when we uh, drag it into uh, Unreal. So, All right, so um, last step always is to go and save your changes like so. And we are good to go. So let's uh, just finalize this guy. I'm going to do a, a null node down here. We'll call this out uh, platform supports. And let's put a netbox around all this. So select all your nodes, do a shift O. Now you have a netbox. We'll call this platform supports. And then uh, color it. I like to just color these guys black, like so. Just a nice uh, organizational tool. Cool, so now we got one piece going. So uh, let's move on into the next chapter here and put on all the wood planks that sit on top of this. So the next step is to uh, get all the wood planks on top of this, that sit on top of this particular, particular platform. So I just went and um, turned on the tower by uh, selecting this ghost other objects. And I am noticing that the these supports here are sitting right inside there. So what we need to do is add a transform node here. Just transform this up just a little bit. And that value that we need to move, again, is half this particular value because that is our Y value. So let's uh, paste this in here. So I'm going to paste this relative reference. Take a look. So that moves it up too much. So we just got to cut that in half. So 0.5. Oops, there we go. There we go. So now it's sitting perfectly right on there, which is what I'm looking for. All right, so let's go and build the um, platform wood planks. So I'm just going to go and um, hold down Alt, left click and drag. Copy this guy because this is our starting primitive. Now we do need to uh, transform this so it sits on top of the supports that we just built. And so I'm going to use a transform and we can actually reference this particular node down here and get the Y size from that. All right, so we're going to do a BB box and we're going to get the information from our out platform supports. And we're going to get the D uh, Y size like so, and that'll place it. So it's sitting right on top of those supports. If I were to template this down here, you can see now it's sitting perfectly on top there. Awesome. All right, so we need to uh, peek it out a little bit. So um, that's going to become one of those global values, this peak value here. So I'm just going to leave it at one for now. You notice that if I were to go into my top view by hitting spacebar two, um, it's actually lining up almost perfectly uh, with our stairs there because our stairs are peaked out a value of one as well. So um, I'm going to do the same thing for this. I'm, I'm just going to do a poly extrude like so. And let's just uh, copy our peak value here. So let's copy the reference. So we're going to copy the parameter and we are going to go and paste it into our inset value here like so. And we're going to do a negative amount and we're going to push it out. Now, all we need to do um, is not output or actually not output the side, just output the front. Now we have a new quad that we can use to break up and into uh, curves and stuff like that to use for our wood planks. All right. And as you can see, it's lining up perfectly with our stairs. So we're going to have to go and cut out a little hole up here. We're also going to have to make sure that the stair railing only comes up to that point as well. So we'll take care of that um, at a later time. But just keep that in mind. We are going to do that for sure. All right. So with that poly extrude in place, let's cut this guy up. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to basically create an add node here. And we're going to delete our geometry. we we'll keep the points. And then we're going to do groups of end points here. So that gives me these two sides here. And then what I ended up doing was I did a resample like so. And on that resample node, I did a maximum segment length like so. Uh, let's resample by polygon edge. So now what that's going to do is it's going to give me a point 
for so many segments here, which is perfect. So we can control the size of our wood planks with that. Let me actually uh, hide all other objects just so we can see what we're doing here. <clears throat> cool. So now at this point, um, I'm going to do a sort. And this sort is so that we can uh, sort this appropriately when we use an add node down here. So let's do an add. And uh, let's wire this up here really quick just so you guys can see the result of that sort node. So inside of this add node, I'm going to also delete the geometry, but keep the points. And then we're just going to do that same operation. We're going to do group of endpoints. So now when you do that without the sort node, you can see that it's not working. I want curves that go in between each of these points. So we need to sort this uh, by X. And so now I have curves or lines between all those points. All right. So that's what the, the reason behind using the, uh, the sort node is there. We just have to get an ordered set of points so that the add node can work. Cool. All right. So for each one of these guys, I want to create a series of wood planks and I want them to be, you know, relatively random here. So, um, to do that, what I ended up doing was, um, I did a for each primitive here like so. And then that lets me then loop through each one of these guys, right? So for each one of those, I want to basically resample this again. So I get, oops, let's do a resample there. There we go. So I get uh, a bunch of segments. Now I want to randomize this uh, per loop here. So every, every single time we go through this loop, I want to randomize um, our particular resample node. And so I'm going to set this to maximum segments resample by polygon edge. And I'm going to write out a little expression in here. All right. And so to do that, we also need to create our meta import node. So we have our loop data. So we can access the iteration number basically. So if you were to look at or select that metadata node there and go to the details view here in the geometry spreadsheet, you can see that we have this iteration number. And as well, let, let me actually pin this here really quick. So I'm just going to select the node. I pinned it. So that way I can come to this node here and, uh, drag the slider around. So you can see that iteration value down here is changing as I go through my single pass. So we want to use that as a seed for our random value that we're going to place into this expression here on the resample node. Cool. So uh, the expression is fit. So we're going to fit a random number that comes back from our iteration value. So we're going to get that iteration value using the detail expression. And so we need to get the information from the loop data node like so. We want to get that iteration attribute and just type in zero for the first index because it is just a, it just has one value. Cool. And then basically now what I want to do is convert that from zero to one value because the random function is going to return zero to one or a value between zero and one, right? So we want to remap it to something like two and let's say six, something like that. All right. So now if I turn this on or turn off the single pass, you can see it's kind of, it might be kind of hard to see. Let me turn off the templating here. So you can see that our resampling is different every single curve here. Some of them are the same, but that'll be fine. This is what I ended up doing. So cool. Let's go now and convert that to a line or use the convert line node, I should say. All right. Just to break it up into individual segments. That way we can then, um, drop down a wood plank node. Very, very useful little HDA that we made ourselves. All right. So let's uh, get the wood plank all set up. So I'm going to reduce the size here. So be, it would be nice to actually know what size that should be, right? Cause, uh, we can't be guaranteed that it's always going to be this particular value, right? So how do we do that? Where do we get that information from? Let, let's uh, adjust the Y size here. That looks pretty good. Like so. Yeah. So where do we get that information from? Right? Well, we come all the way up here uh, to our add node resample node here. This is the, each one of these segments here in this particular curve is the length that it should be. All right. So uh, in order to get that information, let's drop down a convert line here and let's break it up in individual segments. All right. And then we actually want to utilize this rest length now. All right. So if we were to, go to our primitives or is it our points? Oh, <laughs> don't forget to unpin it. There we go. I do that to myself quite often. You'll notice that the uh, rest length is basically the same size for every single one of these. Awesome. 
So we can use that value. Let's just uh, promote it so uh, it's easier to get. So I'm just going to use an attribute promote node here. And we're going to promote this to um, a detail. So I'm going to call this the length adder for the label. I'm going to promote it from a primitive class to a detail class. And the original name is rest length. Cool. So now it's a detail and it's a single value that we can access. So let's come down here to the uh, wood plank node down now and uh, let's get that value. So we're just going to say detail and uh, we're going to get the attribute from our length attribute node and the attribute name is our rest length and zero because it's just a single value. So now if I were to click on the label here, you can see it's returning us the proper value. So let's take a look at this. Awesome. So now if I were to go and change uh, the amount of planks I have, it changes the width of that as well. Pretty cool. It looks like we might need to add a, a seed value. I'm getting a line straight down the middle, which isn't all that aesthetically pleasing. Uh, one thing you can do is, you know, add on some random number. You know, we could always add a spare parameter to this. Let's try doing that here really quick. Uh, let's go and say um, add spare parameter or spare input. Sorry. And actually, I don't need a spare input. Let me delete that really quickly. So let's delete all our spare. I actually just want to edit the parameter interface of this guy. And I'm going to put in a float value. I'm just going to call this seed and seed. You can add on to these notes. Just don't save it. Like don't try to you know right click and you know save or anything. It doesn't even allow you to do it. So. So now what I can do is just uh, copy this parameter. And uh, one thing you can do up here too is um, put the, the cursor over here and just do an Alt-E and that'll load up the uh, expression editor for you. So it's a little bit easier to see. So right after the detail expression, let's just add a plus sign and then we're gonna do a paste relative reference in here. Or it's not gonna actually let me, it's a bummer. Let's close that. Let's go, go in here and just go all the way over here and then paste relative reference. There we go. So now we can change this seed value. And I'm still getting the line. Well, I'll look into it a little bit later. Anyways, it's a good way to get that stuff going there. Let's see, did we have a, a line in the middle here? No. Nope. Yeah, like I said, I'll, if I come up with something better, I'll show you guys for sure, so. There we go. So the other thing I want to do here is I want to do a carve. So let's uh, do a carve. I just want to offset these guys a little bit here. So let's do a carve in here. So for each one of those segments, I just want to uh, carve it a little bit. So let's turn our, on our second U. Drag and drop our first. We'll do our equal offsets here. There we go. So now we can just do offset it just a little bit. Yeah. And then we maybe play with our, oh, oh, never mind. That's from our wood planks here. So you can add more segments to it. Let's just turn that off for now so we can see. There we go. Oh, yeah, it's actually working still. All right. So, um, yeah, let's go and play with our offset a little bit more here. Cool. And then let's go into our wood planks and let's uh, add a little bit of a bevel to this. Let's also computer UVs bevel. And my Houdini crashed. Um, I have found that uh, if you have UVs basically on your mesh and then you try to use a poly bevel node, um, every so often it does crash um, Houdini. So just be aware of that. That's what happened to me. Uh, it's working this time though. So uh, yeah, these are all the values that I have here. Very cool. So what I'm going to do is just drop down a null node and I'm just going to call this out uh, platform planks. like so. And we're going to create an object merge node here. And we'll say assemble. So we'll just assemble everything here. Uh, we don't need any transformation information there. I'm going to add it two slots uh, just by using this button here. And let's do the uh, supports and let's do the platform planks. Uh, so now we just have one node that we can turn on to take a look at how this is coming along. It's looking pretty good. So let's turn it off this guy. We can also put some normals on this and uh, I'm just going to set them to zero for now. Yeah, it's looking pretty good. We 
kind of nice to have a little bit more space. You notice that I did actually unhook this. So let's put this up to like two five. No, let's go down a little bit, like two one five, two two. Yeah, something like that looks good. Cool, you want to be able to see just a little bit through there. All right, so that's looking good. We are now good to go. Let's uh, wrap all this up into a subnet. And we'll call this platform planks and give it our color. Now you can also turn all these guys into subnets just like I did for the tower over here. Just a couple different ways of organizing it. Uh, you'll see these uh, techniques used quite often uh, with other Houdini artists. So that's why I'm kind of mixing it up here. Cool, so now we got our platform planks. Let's move on and start building the actual house here. Well, actually, let's do the railing on the outside here first, and then we'll do the house. Okay, so let's go and put some railing uh, around uh, the platform here. So what I want to do is uh, drop down a grid up here, and I want to get it so that it fits perfectly to um, the platform planks. Uh, you might think that you want to use this particular piece of geometry, but you'll notice that if I switch on the display flag for these guys, they're actually not the same size, and that's because the the uh, wood planks are being swept down the center of those curves, and so just a little bit bigger. So we what we want to do is get the bounding box size of this guy and uh, apply it to a new grid up here. So I'm going to make a new grid up here, and we're going to do rows and columns of two and two just so we have a quad, and then we want to do the bounding box of the platform planks there. So we're going to do out. Uh, platform planks, and we want to get the DX size. All right, so you get the size and X, and then get rid of that E. There we go. And then we want to do the Z size. There we go. So now we're the exact same size. And let's go now and get the positioning. All right, so we can get the position of this guy right here. All right, so let's do that. Let's go and move this guy up. So we're just going to do the uh, centroid of the planks. Like so. And you want to use DX for the X centroid. And then we want to do DZ. There we go. And then finally, we want to do a, a BB box up here. And we want to get the Y position of or the Y max position of our planks. So let's do the out platform planks again. And we'll do D Y max. There we go. So now we're going to be sitting perfectly on top of that. So we can put our railing around it. Awesome. All right. So first things first here, let's go and add this guy. Basically we want to, well, actually, let's go and uh, resample this first. So let's resample it. All right, and we are going to use this to create the posts. So you see, if you don't use the resample by polygon edge, uh, it will actually remove some of those points at the corners, and we want to keep those guys. So let's turn on our point display, and let's put this down to something like four or five. Let's do five to start with. Cool. And then let's uh, go and create a line and we can just copy our line to that, which basically becomes the posts of our railing. Like so let's put in an add node here. Let's delete the geometry and keep the points that'll actually just uh, set them up in Y because by default, this line starts in Y and it's a length of one meter or three feet which is actually a good starting value for this. Perfect. So with that, let's uh, drop down a wood planks utility here. Let's just save our scene just to make sure. And let's go and uh, resize these guys. So I'm going to leave the caps on for now. We might not actually need the caps for this one. So, cause we're going to be putting the uh, handrail on top of this guy. So actually, yeah, let's just turn it off. I don't, well, I might want to put an option to keep, you know, either top or bottom in this case. I'm going to keep them on for now just to, so we have the bottom ones because the bottom ones you're going to be able to see from in game. All right. I'm going to save and turn on my bevel. All right, cool. 
and my Houdini crashed again, which is awesome. So there is definitely something of an issue with these caps because that was the last thing we added to this wood planks and it's been working fine so far. So I think um, it, it all stems from this particular sweep node uh, creating the cap and not liking that bevel in there. So I'm going to actually not do the cap that way. We're going to do a different way. So I wanted to show you guys what I was going to do. I was going to do it off video, but then I was like, well, everyone probably wants to see this. So let me undo all those changes there. All right, so let's go and drop down a polycap node. All right, and let's just wire this in over here. So that's going to basically do the same exact thing that the sweep node is doing it. Obviously something in the sweep node that does not like that. Uh, and we we can actually create the same uh, group name. So end caps is what we're looking for, just so it works with our previous uh, system there. So end caps, there we go. Now we can just uh, send that in there like so. Yeah, looks like it's working now. So I think that was the issue. I'm going to keep going with that. So I'm going to save my changes and uh, match to the current definition. Cool. So now we've got beveling on there, which is great. Uh, let's go and um, save our scene and compute UVs. Yep, looks like everything's working. So it looks like it just didn't like create the caps in the sweep node. So you have to do it yourself with the polycap node. Cool. All right, so uh, with the caps here, let's just uh, move them down a little bit. You know, one other thing that's been kind of annoying me with the updates here, uh, it's probably good that you guys see, you know, what I do on a regular basis with all these guys. Um, I just don't like the negative offsets. We don't need any negatives. So I'm going to put this down to zero and just clamp it. Uh, same with our, well, our inset's always going to be negative in this case, I believe. So I'm just going to set that like so. Actually, we need to do it the other way. Let's do it the other way. So zero and one. We'll cap this one. I'll leave this one uncapped. There we go. Yeah. So just a nice user interface, just quality of life stuff. Makes it a little easier to use. You probably don't need as much range on it. So you can always come in here and uh, adjust the ranges. Let's say we do max of 0.5. I'll leave the inset as it is. All right, because I just want to make it easier to, to get to the look fast without having to use the, you know, it's okay to use the increment ladder. It's just I want to be able to use the sliders here. So there we go. Cool. Yeah, much easier to use now. And we're not crashing all the time, which is sweet. All right, so we have our posts uh, ready to go. That is all set up nicely. So now let's go and create um, the, let's go and create the, a railing, a horizontal railing that's kind of like in the middle um, of all of this here. So all I really need to do is uh, go and drop down a transform node like so. And we can, to make this procedural, I want to basically find the length of the line here. So let's do this. Let's copy this parameter. So as that length changes, we can get some sort of percentage of it. So if I do like, you know, 0.075, like so. so. Let's template this guy now. So we'll always have it there. So maybe we'll do like 6.5. And that becomes then a value that we can expose so we can change it. And it also follows constantly with the size of our posts. So if we change that, everything else adjusts accordingly. Cool. So then all we really need is a, another wood plank. So I'm just going to go get my wood planks here. Let's make sure we saved all these changes and let, let's just uh, match current def definition. There we go. And it looks like we're getting some wonkiness. There we go. Let's reverse the cross section. And let's, uh, for our X size, let's just bring it in a little bit. And let's template our posts so we can get a better idea for our Y size. Yeah. Maybe they'll play around with some of these guys. Yeah, there we go. That's what I was looking for. Just want to push it out a little bit. And let's play around with that uh, X size a little bit more. So super handy tool. Let's make sure we get our UVs in there. I'm going to hit save, turn on our bevel. Yay, it didn't crash. <laughs> I think it was totally the cap stuff. Uh, we'll probably need a couple more segments in here. If we do some vertex color tricks later on. So I want some more geometry to work with. 
Cool, so that's that one. And then all we need to do is just literally take that same guy. So I just held down Alt and then left click and drag. And we just need a line at the very top of these guys. All right, so let's uh, template this and take a look now at this guy. So now we're right at the top. And again, I'm just gonna copy this wood plank tool because it's already set up. And now I want this guy to be centered and I want it to be wider on X. This is basically gonna be the handrail and then smaller on Y. Yeah, so good reason to always make HDAs, little utilities for yourself just to speed up your workflow. Cause you know, we're honestly kind of doing the same thing over and over and over again, but just trying to build up all the parts. So let's go and merge all these guys. So I'm just going to select them all, hold down alt on the keyboard and then left click and drag from one of the outputs there. And that creates our merge node for us automatically. All right. Very cool. Uh, I think the last thing I want to is a piece of wood at the bottom to kind of cover up the ends of our wood planks over here. So let's do that. And let's see, that's just going to be this guy over here. So really, all I need to do, let's drop, drop down a convert line here to break it up into segments. And let's do a carve. And we'll do our equal offset trick. Might as well just make a preset for this. I don't think I have an alder in there already. All right, so let's uh, copy our first view, paste it in there, and do a one minus. Now with that set up, we can come in here and just save a preset. So I'm gonna call this my equal offset. We'll save the preset because we are doing that quite often. All right, and then let's just copy one of our wood planks over here. Should make a little icon for this too. At some point here, not really necessary, but always fun. Oh, it doesn't like it. That's what it is. So it doesn't like it when one of these values is too small for the size. Uh, if it approaches something really close to zero, I think the bevel just kind of gives up and just uh, basically dumps Houdini on you. And so uh, we can take care of that actually. Make sure. So let's go into our parameters. And for our size here, uh, let's make sure we can't go negative. Uh, we first don't want to do that. Let's just say we can't do anything less than point one. I think that'll be good. And the defaults are fine. So I'm just going to lock it off. That should take care of that issue. Oh, I need to unlock it and save it. There we go. Accept and uh, save your node, then just uh, match it. So when you do that, it basically propagates all your changes down to the other guys, right? So super useful. Uh, let's match this one. So it matches and this one, there we go. Cool. All right. So now I think we're good to go. Let's, uh, let me readjust this here. I had to restart and get that all set back up. All right. Let's, uh, move this guy up and I'm just going to move this guy inwards a little bit. Yeah. And I'll just use this carve node so that way you kind of move this off. It would be nice to actually have these guys offset appropriately, but for now, this will be fine for the video. At least I'll probably go in and polish it up a little bit more. Let's push it to the outside too. So let's do the max. That's interesting that it is doing that. Let's uh, just feed in this guy. Well, we do need the carve in there. Let's uh, go up here and add normals. No, it's just going to do the same thing there. So let's keep it centered then. And maybe for the Y, let's do our max. Let's see how that looks here for a second. So I'm just going to put down a null node down here and we'll wire this in. Call this out railing. And we'll just add another slot to our object merge node here and drag and drop our null node into there. And we can look at everything all together. So I do like that look. It's like we need a little bit more extended on the, the line itself. So you can actually take care of that. Let's see, we can do it up here. You can always uh, move the origin down for these guys, which means we'd have to update how we're doing those other ones. So that's no biggie though. I kind of like that. It's working. 
pretty good. All right, so let's move these guys. So basically, let's just get rid of this here. Put this at zero, so that means it's at the bottom. So all I really need to do is get the dy max now. So we're going to do bb box. And we'll get it from that wood plank three. So this guy right over here. So wood plank three. Do d uh, y max. Or I should say y size. That does kind of put it right back up there, doesn't it? And I think I'm going to do this a bit differently here. So I'm going to go back a couple steps here. Back to my original expression. There we go. And let's uh, remove this offset here. And then let's basically let's cut this guy. And then we'll just transform this whole structure down by half this amount here for these guys. Because remember, this is this one over here. So paste that into our Y for this. We'll do times 0.5 to get half of it. We'll move it down. Yep, so that should now, yeah. Well, we could go the whole way too. Just so it covers it up, yeah. Yeah, I think I like that better. So let's do a merge. So always, you know, take a second, sit back, kind of think about, you know, the uh, end results you're going for and see if you can find a better way to do it rather than creating a complicated mess with a bunch of expressions. Yeah, and then we can control the size here. So still works totally for me. Maybe make it a little bit thinner. It's still a little too much for me. This is like a really thin piece. We did clamp it though. If we need a little bit more, let's go see and see where we can push this. See where we can push the values here. So let's go up into our size here. Let's do 0 0.05 and see if that will work for us. So let's do 0 0.05. Yeah. Yeah, that's really all I'm looking for. We just need 0 0.01 for our bevel. Yeah, I think that's going to work well for me. All right. So good stuff there. All right. So now we've got our railing all set up. In our platform so now we just need to work on the house which isn't that di not that difficult really at all um, so let's go and get that guy set up in the next few chapters here all right let's uh, focus on building out the house portion now so let's uh, start from our top prim all right so this basically will serve as our starting point for the house it's right where we need it to be uh, the first thing we do need to do is uh, situate it so it's sitting right on top of our platform planks and really this is why I break things out into their individual components here um, makes it a lot easier to grab the geo that you need all right and so let's come up over here and drop down a transform node like so and we just want to do the uh, d y size of the platform planks so let's do a bb box we'll get the geometry from that platform planks we'll do a d y size there we go. And let's just make sure that that is in fact where we need it to be. And it looks like it's not, it's right in the middle there. Let's do Y max. And that's not going to work. It's going to be way too high. Yeah. So just to be really accurate about it, let's do this. Uh, let's have a transform first to basically recenter it down at the uh, world zero. So all we really need to do for that is a uh, negative dollar CEX and then negative dollar CEY and then negative dollar CEZ. There we go. So now I'll write that back down there. So now we can use the Y max. Yeah, there we go. So now we're sitting right on top of it, which is exactly what we want. Cool. So I also want to add a little bit of scale to it. So uh, we'll call this uh, center in world and then we'll call this placement and then we'll make another transform node and this one will be our scale. I want to make it a little bit bigger than that, a little bit bigger than the actual size of our tower there. And so to scale this, since we don't need any scale on Y, we could 
literally just highlight this guy and move it over here, make a rel relative reference to it. And uh, let's do that one more time there. There you go. And we could scale it out. Let's try that one more time. So I'm just going to highlight this value. Let's just copy the parameter and put it over here. Paste relative reference. There we go. All right. So now I just want to scale it out a little bit. And we can expose that single value now. Cool. All right. So from there, um, what I need to do is I need to sweep a line around this. All right. And so um, let's go and create a line here. And I need to actually break this line up into multiple pieces here. So let's drop down here. I'm going to hide everything else. So let's drop down here. So currently we have a length of one, so that's three feet. So I want this to be around nine feet high. All right, so we can do something like three. There we go. And I need to cut this up and group it into multiple uh, individual curves here. And to do that, I'm going to utilize a carve. And the reason why I'm doing this is because I want to use the curves uh, to build the kind of lower walls, the window uh, side of the wall. And then the upper portion of the wall that's just uh, usually just like, you know, a support structure piece of wood there. All right, so let's uh, drop down a carve node here. And in this case, let's just carve off the top here really quick. And I want to keep uh, my outside. So this is going to be that top portion. It's usually kind of a, a larger board. All right. And then let's split this up. So now I'm going to drop down a split node here. And let's get rid of primitive zero. And yeah, that'll work for me. So then I'll do another carve node here. And this will be the bottom portion. All right, so I want to do something kind of like that. We also want to keep the outside as well. And we can adjust this all later. So let's drop down a merge node. Merge these guys back together. Yeah, so now we have three segments. So I turn on my print numbers. We have zero, one, two. Let's just always ensure that we actually have uh, proper numbering there. So it goes from zero to the highest number of primitives up here. So uh, for our point sort, let's do by Y and primitive sort will do by Y as well. That just ensures that it's always going to be like that. Cool. So now what we need to do is we need to group uh, this stuff. So we can drop down a bunch of group nodes here. And I'm going to call this one the uh, bottom. Like so and we're just going to type in zero, right? So it'll group just that guy. And then let's just copy that node using the alt left click technique there. I'm going to call this middle. And this is going to become primitive one. There we go. And then we'll do another one. And this is going to be our top. And this is going to be primitive two. Cool. So with that done, let's go now and uh, create the posts with that. So I'm just going to move this off to the side. This one's going to get kind of big here. So I'm going to do the main corner posts here. So let's do an add node. So we get just our points. All right, let's hit F on the keyboard. And let's delete our geometry, but keep the points. And let's do a uh, copy to points now. So we'll copy to points. And really, we don't need this particular one for this operation. We just need the, the starting curve here. So let's do that. Yeah. So that's going to become kind of the, the major post corners for our house there. And now all we really need to do is drop down a uh, wood panel. So let's do that. Cool. All right. I'm going to save this guy. Let's uh, create our UVs. Let's do a little bit of a bevel on this. And let's adjust the size. I am going to keep this square. All right, that looks pretty good. It's a little much for me on the bevel. And let's go and change the distance on this over here. Yeah, something like that looks good. Yeah, let's change our edge angle here. See if we can get those guys to break apart there. Yeah, that looks fine. All right, cool. So let's uh, now focus on building out the actual wall segments. So like the, uh, the bottom wood planks and then the windows and then the top wood plank up here. 
All right, and so to do that, uh, I am going to sweep this guy. So let's do a sweep. So we're going to sweep using this curve up here. All right, very cool. And now we can reverse those cross sections. Uh, the cool part about this and the reason why we set up those groups is now they go along with the sweep node, right? So we can actually blast away geometry, which is awesome. So now we can use blast node and work on each individual section here. So I'm going to blast away, or I'm going to get the bottom. And then, so this is going to be bottom geo. Let's create a copy here. Then this one's going to be our middle or our windows. Call it middle geo. Then we'll make another copy here. And this will be our top group. We'll call it our top geo. Cool. So we are good to go here. So now. All I need to do is build those bottom planks, which is pretty easy. So let's uh, create a subnet and do it inside of a subnetwork here. Just to stay organized. So we'll call this the uh, bottom planks. Dive inside. And what I want to do in here is for each one of these primitives, so let's drop down a for each primitive loop. So for each one of those primitives there, we want to run some sort of operation. There we go. All right, so I'm going to drop down an add node here. And let's turn on our single pass so we can just focus on one. So let's delete our geometry, and we are going to put this on group of endpoints. There we go. And we're going to do our resample. So let's resample that guy. It's kind of like what we did for the wood planks on the platform over here and again i'm going to use maximum segments and resample by polygon edge and let's do something like yeah that's five looks pretty good to me all right let's uh, do a convert line there so let's do convert line we don't need the rest length attribute at least not that i know well maybe we do let's keep it all right, and then let's uh, promote that to a detail. So let's do an attribute promote. And we're going to promote from our primitives to a detail, and we're going to get that rest length just so we can access it in our wood planks HDA that we made. All right, so then for each one of those particular segments, I just want to find the center point. So I'm going to use a carve node for that and put this at 0.5. That gets me the center point if we actually just set this to extract. So now we have that center point there, and then we can just do an add node. And inside of the add node here, we want to basically get the amount of segments from our resample node. So I'm gonna go and copy this guy. So let's delete our points, go in here, and we're gonna do skip every nth point, and that value is gonna be our resample value. Cool, so with that, we can just run it through our wood planks HDA. So let's uh, go to IndiePixel Firewatch Utilities Wood Plank. Cool. So let's save that and uh, let's go and adjust this a little bit. And now we can use that rest length for this particular size right here. All right, so I'm going to do a detail, get it from the incoming geometry because it's actually on the incoming geometry. At least it should be. Rest link. There we go. So we'll say detail from zero and then zero for the index there. Sweet. So then I just went and um, adjusted my caps and the bevels and stuff like that. So nothing crazy there. Uh, now we can turn off our uh, single pass and see what we get. Yeah, it looks pretty good. I think. Let's um, go and test out this guy. So we can make more or less wood boards there for the side. I think I'm going to err on the side of the bigger ones there. Yeah, I think we're going to go with that because the posts are going to hide all that stuff there. So now we can uh, merge together these guys. Let's merge these two guys together with our posts. Cool. All right, so 
let's go now and take care of our uh, windows. So let's create another subnet here. Let's call this windows. And inside of here, we want to um, drop down a, another for each primitive loop. So we can loop through each one of these guys and get the geometry all prepped. So let's do a for each primitive in here. There we go. And what are we going to do inside of this guy here? So let's first, the first thing I, I need to do is I need to actually create a normal uh, so we can check to see if we need to reverse this stuff. And I'm going to put that on my points here. So now I have point normals like so. And then I want to drop down an add node and I'm going to go and delete geometry. And we are going to do group or now let's skip every nth. There we go. Cause I want to resample this or both those edges at the same time. All right. This will allow me to determine how many windows I have in my window wall here. So let's do a resample and let's do maximum segments. And we're just going to do this at like, three or four. Let's do three. Yeah, that looks good. Just like that. All right. And then let's skin that back together. So we'll skin it. And so that one worked out nicely. Let's see if we actually do need to do. Yeah, it looks like we're going to have to do a reverse trick. So we need to do a little bit of wrangling here. So let's do an attribute wrangle. And for the code for this, all we need to do is um, create a new vector variable called norm or nerm and get that first or get a normal from one of the points. So I'm just going to do point. I'm actually going to run this over primitives too. So let's do the incoming geometry. We want to get the normal attribute from point zero, basically. There we go. So then we can do a comparison. We can do, I'm going to create a new local variable called dot val and we can do dot at n so the primitive normal dotted with the point normal and if they're facing in the opposite direction then uh, we need to, to switch so we're going to say if uh, dot val is less than zero in this case I'm going to say i at group underscore reverse so we're just dynamically creating a group here without using a group node so we're going to set it to one. So now after all that, we should have a bunch of primitives that probably need to be reversed. So you can see here. Yeah. So most of them have to be reversed. So let's drop down a reverse node at the bottom here and just use that group that we just created and reverse it all. So now it's all back to normal. Beautiful. Okay, cool. So let's uh, create the outline of the windows now. And to do that, I'm going to utilize a poly extrude node, but we're going to do some custom setup here. So let's drop down a poly extrude node and we are going to inset this something like 0.0, I don't know, 0.25, something really subtle. Well, that's probably a little too subtle. Let's do point. No, that's too much. Uh, let's do 0.05. Yeah, let's go with that. And, and actually, let's also make sure we do it on individual elements. So each window gets uh, a nice window trim. Now, the thing is, I don't want this bottom one down here. So what we can do is we can control the extruded front. And if you put this on global, you can now move that face up and down that extruded face, right? So all we need to do is just move it down the negative amount that the inset is. So let's just paste this in here and just move that down. So it's flush with the ground there. Now you are going to get a thicker top up here, which in my case, I think that's going to be okay. Yeah, I'll, I'm going to be happy with that. Maybe we pull it down so it's not so obvious. Yeah, something like that. Cool. All right, so after we do that, we're going to have a primitive down here that basically has zero area. And we can actually quickly clean that up using a clean node. So I'm going to come in here, and you can see by default it gets rid of it. Because it has zero area, so it's basically a, a degenerate primitive. Cool. All right, so let's keep moving on forward here. Um, let's go back up to our poly extrude node and um, group the front pieces so we can use that for the window here. So now we've got the, the window geometry in a group that we can uh, blast away or split away. And I think we are going to do that. So let's... Um, do a poly extrude, but this time only on the extrude side. So 
let's also do that. Expose the extrude side group. So let's do a poly extrude. And let's go and do that like so, and then just give it kind of a subtle piece, a subtle extrusion there. And uh, let's do it on connected components. We actually need a, a fuse up here. Let's do the fuse after this guy, after the reverse node. Yeah, there we go. So now it fused it up nicely. I, you don't have to if you want to keep it the other way or the way it was. Cool, so now let's split on that window geometry and uh, add a little bit of opacity or alpha to it. So I'm gonna split on window. There we go. That gets me all my window pieces. And let's do a subdivide just in case we need some uh, vertex colors for this guy. So I'm just do two subdivisions. I think you might not need that, but I'm just gonna put it in there for now. And also if you wanted, you know, really tiny window panels in here, that's just the way to go about doing that, like, like so. All right, and then I'm going to color these guys. So let's color it. Give it kind of a bluish color. I'll expose that later. Kind of dark, desaturated. And then finally, let's put in some alpha. So drop down a wrangle node here. And it's actually a built-in value that uh, Houdini is looking for. So if you just do at alpha is equal to something like 0 0.5, uh, you'll get some opacity or transparency there. All right, let's merge everything back together. Awesome. There we go. Everything is looking good. One thing we should probably do is do the backs of these two, because I do want to be able to walk inside. Um, we do also do need to put a door on this somewhere. So I'm going to save that for a separate video. I just kind of want to get the house done. Uh, it's easy enough to add the door in here. So for this guy, we could actually, because this is using the extrude side, let's just make a separate one over here. So I just did an alt left click and drag and let's just do a negative. And honestly, we could do a reference copy like so. And then just uh, negate this value. So now we're going inwards and we could blast away. So let's do this. Let's blast away the windows because we don't need that geometry anymore. This is just my interior. And then we have to reverse this one. Oops, not rewire, reverse. There we go. And normal. Get the normals correct. There we go. And then all we really need to do is just uh, merge these two guys together and fuse them. Oh. And we're going to have to do something a little different here. So I'm just going to actually copy the parameter and paste this guy in. There we go. Yeah, so now we should have the inside and the outside. Cool, and then we just fuse it. And there we go, we got some windows. All right, you can go in there and you know, make some more fancy windows if you want. This is actually kind of what they had in the Firewatch tower. It's nothing really fancy. Just kind of big windows that you can see out of. All right, so with that, let's see here. We've got all of that, that looks good. Let's just wire this into our output. And that is our window wall now. So let's uh, merge it into this final merge node here for the, the house. Let's turn on our ghost other objects here. Yeah, it's starting to come along. Very cool. All right, so the last one that we need to do is this top guy up here, which is pretty easy. So we've got this guy, you know, honestly, you could just uh, go and do some extrusions to it. This isn't really, it's a pretty hidden piece anyways. Uh, let's name this too. We'll call this a uh, top uh, plank. And let's just do a poly extrude. I'll 
we'll just move it up just a little bit. And we'll just do the opposite of that. So let's just get this guy, copy the parameter. And negate it. And then reverse it. Do our normals. And merge these two guys together. And that is really all that you need to do. Boom. Yeah. Definitely can use, you know, a door. <laughs> all right, cool. Uh, I'm going to save all that. Let's um, go and test this out. So with my line here, I can change the height. If we do want to do something, maybe like uh, let's do seven or not seven. Let's do uh, 2.5. Yeah, I think that fits a little bit better. So change the, the height of the wall or the, uh, the house really fast. I will expose all that stuff too. Cool, it's looking cool. Three seem like a little bit too tall for me. Yeah, that looks good. All right, let's get it hooked in. Let's create our, well, actually, you know, well, let's find it. Let's just put a uh, net box around this guy. We'll just call this our uh, house walls. Give it our color, and we'll just assign it to our assemble object merge node here. So let's put down a null node just so we stay consistent and organized. Call out house walls, and then let's select our app, our assemble node, and just uh, drag and drop that in there. So now we have everything all together. Yeah, it's coming along nicely. Cool. All right, so let's uh, move on and focus on the roof. Let's focus on building out the roof now. And really, it's not too difficult. There's a couple of cool tricks in there. So um, let's go and drop down a transform node over here. Now, this is the bottom of the, the house there. And so I need to move it so it's situated itself on the top. So I think what we're going to do is actually put this in a different stream over here. So um, let's just do this here. I'm going to create an object merge node like so and wire this into that transform node and then we'll put a null node right here. There we go and just wire those guys in there. And we'll call this out uh, bottom uh, floor, something like that. Call it whatever you want. Let's drag and drop that in here. Turn off the uh, transform. And now all we really need to do is move to the top of this guy. So we just need to get the, the Y size of that. So let's do that. So in this transform node, we are going to do our BB box expression, get the uh, data from our out house walls. And we want the D Y size. There we go. Yeah. So let's uh, template our house. There we go. Let's turn everything else off. Cool. So now we've got uh, the start of our roof there. So I'm going to drop down a subnet just to keep it organized here. We'll call this a uh, build roof. All right. Very cool. So now I do actually need to keep those guys on. Well, it should be fine. All right, let's put down a transform node over here. And I am going to scale this. So let's copy this over here, the X, copy it to the Z. And we're just going to scale it out a little bit. So it has a little, little bit of an overhang. All right, so that'll be the roof overhang right there. And then we need to go and uh, extrude, poly extrude this. So let's do a poly extrude. This will create the actual pitch of the roof. So I'm just going to pull it up a little bit and then we'll just do an inset until it basically just comes to a single point here. Easy enough. Yeah. Cool. So let's make sure we fuse it. If we don't, then we'll have multiple. We still have the, the top geometry up there, which means we don't need to output the front, we, but we do need to go and fuse the points up there. So if you take a look at your point numbers, you have a bunch of points up there. So now we fuse it and now we have a pyramid. 
easy. Cool. So now I just want to divide it because I need to put shingles on this thing. So an easy way to kind of divvy this up into rows over here is to use a divide node and uh, I put it on brick or polygons like so. And what I ended up doing was I took the bounding box of the incoming geometry. So let's type this out here. So we say bounding box zero and we do our D uh, Y size times 10. And I just did the same thing for the Z over here. Then I set my Y to 0.1 and that gave me perfect rows to use. And you can change this basically is the size of your shingles or the height, I would say, of your shingles. Yeah, very cool. Okay, so with that done, now we just need to loop through each one of those guys. So let's do a for each uh, primitive. And let's actually just cut it up into individual little shingles now. All right. So the first thing that we're going to have to do in order to get this to work is determine, because if I turn on my single pass here, let's turn this on. So this one has, you know, a length in X, but really it doesn't have any length in Z. It just has a little bit. So we can actually write a little bit of X code to determine if we should switch on the X or the Z direction. So let's write some, let's drop down a wrangle note here. And I'm going to go and get first the size of our incoming geometry. And to do that, we use the uh, get VB box size. It's literally like using the D Y size with the bounding box H script expression. All right. And we're going to get it from the incoming geometry. And so here I'm going to declare a new uh, local variable and I'm going to make sure that this is a detail. So we only get one value. So it's not per point or per primitive or anything. We're going to say switch is equal to zero by default. But if our uh, size dot Z is greater than our size dot X, then we should switch to something else. We should do a different operation. So we're going to say at switch is equal to one. Cool. So now we can use that in a switch. So let's drop down a switch node like so. And I'm going to drop down a couple of divide notes and we're going to label these guys. Let's actually make ourselves a little bit more room so we can see. I just don't like it when all the the lines are crossing each other. All right, so let's call this um, x, x divide. And let's make a copy of this guy. And we'll call this z divide. There we go. And now in these nodes here, uh, what we want to do is we want to, again, use the brick or polygons. And we just turn on the size. So basically, in this case, this is the X, right? So this will allow you to control, you know, the size of your shingles in X. And then for uh, Y and Z, let's just set it to something huge, like 100. And then for Z, we basically do the, uh, the Z direction, right? So X and Y become 100. And Z becomes whatever this value is. So let's just copy this, this particular parameter here and put it over here so everything's the same size. And then we just switch on that. Right. Yeah. So we just say detail because we want to get the attribute value to see if we should be switching. And we want to get it from the attribute wrangle one and we want to look for switch and zero. All right. Now, if all goes well, let's turn off our single pass here. Yeah. Shingles. Ta da. Pretty cool. Pretty neat little trick. Uh, it get, gets you the offsets right away. You might end up with these little guys over here. But, you know, if you really want to get detailed, you could add another set of shingles at the line. A lot of times you see this on roofs. It lines the corners over here. Um, I'm, I might do that later on, but I'm not going to put it on video <clears throat> or anything like that. Uh, it's really just the same techniques as what I've been showing you guys here. Um, cool. So with that, now uh, we can go through each one of those pieces. So let's save that and let's just do another loop. So I'll say for each uh, primitive here, of course, we don't necessarily have to do that. I don't think we could actually, well, let's do that anyways, because we might want to UV them. Yeah. Just thinking here for a second. All right, let's do this. So I just want to give these guys just a little bit of 
bump to it, you know. So poly extrude, and uh, I'm gonna go and just lift it up a little bit, like just a tiny bit, and inset it just a tiny bit as well. Nothing too crazy, just to give it a little bit of something. Now you might want to do that all in the texture as well. You might your whole roof might just be a texture too as well. So I'm just showing techniques. Alrighty, and then let's do a UV flatten in here, just to give it some UVs. Uh, by default, it'll just do that. So we'll leave it on spectral, so it's fast or fast-ish. And there we go. So now we have, yeah, very nice, very very nice, cool. And then one thing we can do is colorize this. So I, I like to do my assemble trick here. I do my assemble and that puts a name attribute on every primitive, right? So then we can take that name attribute and pass it into a color node here. Cool. And set this to primitive and we'll do a random from attribute. And the attribute we are going to use is our name. So now we have all these guys select it out then let's go now and let's do a wrangle let's just get the value from this so on primitives i'm going to say at cd is now equal to rgb uh, to hsv all right so we're just going to take in the incoming geometry so if we look at the help for this guy by hitting f1 so just put the cursor right over it hit f1 you can see that it's wanting to bring in a uh, vector, so we just need to pass in uh, at CD. That's the incoming color. And then G is your value. So now you get a grayscale of this, which we can use. It's, it's going to be between 0 and 1. So let's just call this value, or color value. There we go. And now we can go and um, promote this. So I'm going to promote it to a point attribute instead of a primitive. It's currently our colors on our primitives. So we'll say primitive to point, like so. And then we can actually use that value to remap it into a different color. Or you can use the lab nodes too. Um, I, I tend to use the lab nodes when I just need to get something done really fast. Um, but just be wary about using them in your own HDAs. Uh, and the reason for that is because then you have to make sure that everyone else who's using your HDAs has the labs nodes installed on their machine, which is not always the case. And plus you get into versioning issues and stuff. So well, let's, um, rather than put this into the color, let's just uh, put it into a different value. So we're going to say F at uh, ramp is equal to at CD dot R. So then now we can drop down another color node and use that value as a ramp. So we'll say ramp from attribute. We're going to have to promote um, that other attribute as well. There we go. So now that's on the points. Cool. So let's go and do a ramp from attribute. And the attribute is going to be a ramp. So now we can control the color way better. So now I just bring this down and do something more. Yeah, you know, shingle like kind of different colors, you know, it's subtle. There you go. Cool. So I just wanted to show that. All right. So there's our roof. We're good to go now. Let's uh, put down a null node here. Call this out roof. And let's add another slot to our assemble node here and drag and drop a roof in there. Very cool. So let's take a look at what we're getting. All right. So yeah, we're going to have to put something down at the bottom here, but I think for this video for this week, that's uh, pretty good stuff right there. Uh, I'm going to keep going um, with this whole series. We're going to do landscapes and uh, foliage and stuff. I just want to show you guys all, you know, all the steps that I usually take. Um, and so, yeah, 
but I can only do uh, videos um, every week uh, because currently I have lots going on at work. So I'm trying my best to help out. So we're going to call this the roof. And there we go. Cool. So I think that's pretty good. I think what I'm going to do is let's go. So over in the tower, I'm not sure if I showed this in the last video. Um, I added the unreal material. So for the unreal material, if you want to hook it up automatically, uh, this is what you got to type and then just got to get the reference path to the material inside of unreal. All right. So I'm just going to copy these guys here. Actually, I'm going to cut it first off and let's, well, no, for now, you know, I am going to just do this here. I'm going to leave it in there. I'm just going to copy these guys and just uh, put it in for the house as well. So, yeah, so we can put the material down here. So let's do this and put the material over here. And then I want to colorize my other parts and pieces. So I can just use this node to get some colors going. That's not really what I really wanted to do. That's good. So we'll leave that one there. We'll do it for all the uh, main wood stuff. I do want to colorize the, uh, the house a little bit differently. So this is just a quick fix for now. Yeah. Cool. So that is coming along nicely. I think the roof's going to be, have to be a little bit more overlapping or not overlapping, just a, a little bit more of a overhang. Something like that. Yeah. Cool. All right. So with that, uh, we are pretty much good to go with the house. Uh, next week, like I said, next week, we're going to cover UVs and uh, texturing. Uh, this is going to be utilizing mostly uh, trim sheets. Uh, we'll add in uh, the little weather guards that they have for the windows and get some more props in there. Yeah. And then take care of some of these other things. We also need to uh, cut out a hole here so we can actually get up from our stairs. Uh, we also need to basically carve this. Now, you know, the other thing is too, if you come all the way to the bottom down here, you can see we, this doesn't really look that great. One thing you could do, uh, now I'm thinking about it here really quick. Let's go into the tower over here. And <clears throat> while we're building the stairs, let's go find the curve that is building the railing over here. I think it's over here. Where are we building the railing? I should have left myself some notes. All right. So there's that path. So what you can do is you can carve it, right? So we can do, let's do this just to bring it in a little bit, the starting point really. So let's take a look at that. Yeah, it's a little bit better. And then for the top up here, I want to basically do the whole thing. So we really need it to come all the way down, which means the whole curve basically needs to be. Yeah, let's try it. So let's do the second U. Yeah, this one's going to be basically where the whole thing stops. Let's take a look at that. And nope, I didn't like that at all. So let me just template that out for now. Let's see, where would I do that? Oh, I see. All right, well, uh, I'll get that sorted out for you guys, and then I'll show it to you guys uh, next week, in next week's uh, video in continuation of the Firewatch project. All right, so uh, with that, let's uh, move on and just uh, drag and drop this into Unreal. So I'm going to open up my Unreal and uh, just drag and drop it in there and see how we're doing. Well, let's uh, go and save our HDA now. So let's go and save it, just to save all the changes that we just made. And I'm going to go back into Unreal here, or go into Unreal. 
And I'm going to right click on my Firewatch Tower and I'm just going to say uh, Rebuild Selected. That should uh, get the uh, updates. And it's going to ask me, uh, because I installed both HDAs into one library, uh, it's going to ask me which one I want, and that's the Firewatch Tower 2. And there we go. So now we have this guy. We're definitely going to need to put a bottom on that stuff. But there's our Firewatch Tower. Pretty cool stuff. All right, let's test out some of these uh, parameters here. So let's put it down, the floor count down to something like four. Yeah, oh, we're still moving pretty speedy. It's basically almost everything that we're going to do on here. We only have a couple more things to put on it. Um, so it's going to be pretty much the speed of everything. I'm going to try to avoid the UV layout nodes as much as possible. And we're going to try to do most of the UVing and positioning of the UVs because we have most of the UVs already made. Um, we're going to do a lot of the positioning of the UVs in VEX just to make it speedy. Yeah, everything looks like it's all still hooked up. Let's try the taper. <laughs> nice. That is awesome. Yeah, let's bring it back in a little bit. How cool is that? That's why I love the Houdini engine. Just to, you know, honestly, it takes time to get used to, so. There we go. We are now set up. We just have a few things left to do. So hopefully you guys enjoyed that video. Sorry, uh, they're kind of long. I'm just trying to show as much as possible. So thanks so much for watching. I'll see you guys soon.